I laughing? Am I crying? Or maybe I'm poking my tongue out at you. You just don't know. Here's a little bit of unmasked emotion. A bee, a bee is next to me, sipping lavender tea. This bee, this bee appears to be very, very happy. We went to the X Factor a few months before the pandemic. I wonder what future generations will make of 2020. Will we be esteemed like war heroes? We don't even have a uniform, let alone medals. The war heroes of 2020, but our war was invisible. The poet Wilfred Owen accounts how people would dying in the trenches fighting for their country. All we were asked to do was to stay home, save lives and save the NHS. So I'm on my way to Slimming World where my only concern was that I'd eaten a McDonald's the pre-pandemic days. Oops. Dog Simi's pre-pandemic carefree days. The previous year when I had all sorts of hopes, dreams and ambitions for my walking and my life per se. This is what I would love to be able to do as a starter outside of the house is to walk my dog and then maybe think about trying to get a small part-time job and maybe even starting a family but being able to walk through the dog will be a start. So I'm going to try and walk again up and down the corridor. I feel like my base is quite solid and I feel relatively energised compared to how I feel normally. I feel like I could stand here actually Oh, 2019 and all its promise. So we all followed that yellow brick road the year before in 2019. Little did we know what was around the corner for us in 2020. Before the pandemic, before Brexit, wrote this eerie. Didcot Tower Power. Once upon a time in 2019, now 2080, 60 years ago I mean, Didcot generated electricity through three chimney cooling towers. They would pump out shit, I mean water vapour, for hours and hours. To wipe them off the map was part of the green regeneration plan. When the Big Bang occurred, some locals wept and were so upset. You see some of the towers nostalgically, like a well-loved family pet. You see, the water vapour and concrete had always been there, generation after generation. A backdrop, a heartbeat, a symbol of love and their own creation. Directly after the ban, papers reported, pylon goes up, 49,000 homes without electric, neon blue flames. The official line, electricity board, nor council were never ever at blame. You see, no one noticed the one pylon that fed the town its electric. Dust on the cable was to blame. Directly after the bang at 7am, the world is going to end my dog barks and barks and barks. No more Sunday line for Dad and our dog Spark. You see, the electricity went off with a spark. Parents took their kids to watch the explosion for a lark. Then complained that they had dust in their cars as near the bang they did park. Towers collapsing and crumbling fast. Tears and memories of loved ones past. Funeral ashes, I guess, if you ask. The concrete creatures were no more, blasted with dynamite and now rubble on the floor. Dad teased, what landmark now will we use to get back in the car? Nearly home, Mum would smile as she saw the towers loom over fields from afar. Dad added, I'm sure we'll all get over it as our house prices soar.
Elsewhere, after the bang, a police siren challenged the bird whistling song. The alarmed animals we called birds fought back by whistling along. Two worlds had collided. Mum, God bless her soul, had hoped for the best of both. To the future, Dad did toast. Didcot had been well and truly gentrified and turned into a town. Blazing sunshine after the blast, then a black cloud shower. Such was the saga of the 2019 Didcot Tower Power. So Didcot had two shops run by the council, a craft-based shop and a youth club, but strangely both had been shut with these strange signs on the outside of them. Asserting Didcot as a garden town and a great place to live and work and play. Yes, they ploughed a lot of money into the economy and invested in the community. And thousands of homes have been built. We knew this. Why have they shut these two shops? And yes, lots of businesses and theatres and cinemas were being enjoyed by the good people of Didcot in Didcot Garden Town. So why have they shut these two shops? This was rather ominous. The space store there, a small independent run shop, um, allowing people the virtual reality experience of space. Education, yes. Lots of money had been invested into schools and there were a lot of young people living in Didcot. So why have they shut the craft shop and the youth club? Yes, Didcot is a garden centre and is a great place to live and work and play. Somebody on a bike and lots of country soap which we are being encouraged to also enjoy. And a picture of an empty street and an empty town centre. Why is that a great place to live and work and play? Little did we know what was around the corner for us. Yes, a swimming pool and allotment, neither of which we would be able to use over the next few months. So this, to me, struck me as very strange, to the point where I even bothered to do some film footage of it. What was going on that the council knew about? This, of course, was the day where we all understood that lockdown was happening. Ah, 2019 and Brexit. Before Christmas and before the pandemic back in December, Miss Shrub's nativity play was not going to plan this year. Church Hall had been double booked. polling station for breakfast cheer. Miss Shrub's innkeeper door, cardboard, poster painted, was wobbling and about to fall. Back benches tried propping it up with no real commitment at all. Nigel Farage, the Brexit party, self-appointed as Jason, stuck his foot in the innkeeper's door. A toothless four-year-old innkeeper lisped. There's no room at the inn anymore. Shepherd's tea towels on their heads, but the staff them were stained and dirty. Consecutive leaders and shepherds look 70, had I started the role looking 30. But the shepherds did sing, all seated on the ground. Shepherds did watch their flocks by night until Corbyn stepped in the preaching employment law right. Thus during silent night, a full-scale fight. Staples on King's homemade crowns were pinging off into the air. Joe Swanson, that Lib Dem, stapling madly, heard declare, don't despair. But ouch, started stapling Kitty's crowns to head and hair. The Kings did fight back 
brandishing their orient civil war, beholding fountain, moor and mountain, following yonder star. Except the star was on strike too. Her night shifts were long and she refused to sparkle and sing the twinkle, twinkle song. I mean the reviews. The graduate paper. Parents were whispering every other line to the news politicians. Their eyes squinting in the stage light. Politicians not having scripts about what Brexit is and struggling with all their might. The Daily Rag. Green Party renamed Jesus Leaf. To make him non-binary rather than a bloke then, then told angels to chillax and gave them all a wacky wacky smoke. And there was more from the parents. Libs started bribing teachers with the king's and shepherd's gifts to vote. The Brexit party decided a stable was not okay for ki God's kid and wanted to build a castle with a moat. The T Tories wanted to build on the filth where the shepherd's flock slept and dwelt. Green said building would make the polar ice caps melt. I mean, the parents' review of the show was mixed to say the least. Many felt the shrub had gone a little off piste. Watching David Cameron had a fake cry. His wife Sam Campbell and saying something in his eye. Toddler Florence weeping, why daddy, why did you suggest a referendum? She did sigh. Our passion and interest was that we would get billions to have our potholes filled and like Jesus healed millions. I never did find out to run the poll. But thanks for listening. God bless your soul. So the start of the pandemic, I already have various appointments that have been overdue and cancelled for some reason that I don't know about. And I'm already on a tall walking frame as opposed to trying to wall walk or walk unaided. So already my disability is suffering. So this year, 2020, I'm not even going to be able to get into the garden like previous years as there are steps down into the garden. There is no mention of masks yet and I'm beginning to panic. Touch it with a staple gun, old fashioned styly. However, as it is, not before Wednesday the 13th of May. Step one, outdoor exercise is now unlimited as long as you socially distance. Two, you are now allowed to visit parks, walk, sunbathe and even barbecue as long as you socially distance. You can now drive to other destinations in England, no distance stated, but not Scotland or Wales, to exercise as long as you socially distance. You can now play sports, but only with people from your own household, to reduce the chance of infection to others. Fines may be increased for people who ignore social distancing rules and take part in social gatherings. You can now start going back to work if you can't work from home and social distancing can still be met. Manufacturing and construction work were cited. You should try to avoid public transportation where possible, ideally walking or cycling to work if pra practical, if not then drive. Hello, so August 2020 here again. So back um, in the spring, Boris had also started to map out how he stored stage two and stage three going. Or the like. Um, however, I've just gone through step one. Step two, of course, which we're hoping for in June at the earliest here in the UK, the phased reopening of retail and some shop shops. So this is all June at the earliest look at getting primary schools back but only reception year one and year six secondary school pupils will get some time with teachers before the holiday regarding exams so that's step two and so step one which i presented in the previous episode and step two which i've just told you about will be closely monitored before moving to step three which will only happen if there is no major increase in infections. A major increase will result in return to lockdown status. Then, of course, we've got step three, which will be no earlier than July 2020, we've been told. So start to look at reopening hospitality and other public places that attract large gatherings such as restaurants, cinemas, theatres, etc, um, leisure 
and the above is staged over the next two months basically so stage two and stage three so in a nutshell social distancing rules here in the uk stay in place and must be followed visiting other households is still not permitted social gatherings are still not allowed you do not have to return to work if your place of work is not yet allowed to open or your employer chooses to remain closed and restricted movement is not over it has just been slightly relaxed to see if doing it has an effect on the reinfection rate this r value which is the buzzword here in the uk at the moment so boris um, made it clear if the steps are not met then social distancing and restriction movement will carry on until the steps are met um, another buzzword that um, joined us here in the uk was stay alert don't know where they picked that one up but remain aware and diligent that the virus is still a threat to your health and the health of others control the virus continue to control the spread of the virus by adhering to social distancing guidelines avoid or restrict contact with others outside of your household and save lives do your part to help stop the spread of the virus to yourself and others so that is kind of where we are here in the uk at the end of play today it'd be really interesting to hear what's going on in australia america and europe so please do feel free to comment below on this post i'll be fascinated to hear what your rules and policies are in your country at the moment as regards this prolific horrific um illness that is affecting all of our lives so it's now august 2020 and you will notice that i have aged by about 20 years um very few hairdressers are open beauticians aren't opened um i'm lacking sunlight and oxygen as you can just tell by looking at my skin and my poems have taken a very different turn Stay home, Grandma Iris, coronavirus. Stay home, Cousin Nathan, self-isolation. Stay home, niece divine, unprecedented time. Stay home, Aunt Tosh, alcoholic hand wash. Stay home, Brother Peter, distancing of two metre. Stay home, Mum L, alcoholic hand gel. Stay home, Dad Bing, mask wearing. Stay home, Mrs Wok, time bomb, tick tock. Stay home, Mr Bean, too late, ventilator machine. I actually ended up in hospital over the pandemic for three weeks because I fell over and fractured my good leg and because the issues with my bad leg had not been seen to and I'd got outstanding bladder issues it was considered that it was better for me to be in hospital as I was essentially bent bound and peeing myself not to put too fine a point on it. Um, however on a lighter note I met some amazing people in hospital and here are some of their stories. No matter what happens in life, if you fail an exam or you leave your wife, you even stab someone with a knife. The moon is always there, giving out its friendly glow. When the moon started, nobody knows. It's always there for you to ponder and stare. I also had to go to the JR with a suspected DVT for one night thereby hang the story that's a video in its own right but essentially i was on a ward with people with neurodifference including many people in their 90s with neurodifference such as dementia and it made me reflect on elderly relatives that were no longer with us grandma never watched television and changed the channels Grandma never had a mobile phone. Grandma thought that computers took up the whole room and were built for S Second World War, responsible for breaking the German code. Grandma never saw England win the World Cup. I wonder what things I will never see. The mind boggles. Over the pandemic, we were all writing our wills. We were... 
we were reflecting on the demise of our own parents or our partners or possibly our children. This disease was relentless. It struck down our Prime Minister, Boris Johnson. Um, it had struck down Prince Charles. It didn't discriminate. One woman in hospital reflected to me nostalgically upon her husband that sadly departed. Buttons on a cardi. Grace could not part with it. Smelt of soap powder, old polish and woodbind. Threads hanging off and a patch on the elbow. Still, she could not move it off the back of the chair. One weekend, parents took their children down to Bournemouth during the pandemic and were chastised. Why did they do this when we were told to socially distance and stay home? I can only think that parents were trying to recreate the fond, loving memories that they had of their own youth and their own childhood. What might these memories be? From the seafront souvenir shop, you select a bucket and net, rock pools, tiny crabs caught, put in a sandcastle bucket, fish and chips in vinegar, Gulls dive bombing, swooping down. Sandy sandwiches, sandy hair and sand castles everywhere, waiting for the tide to come in for your moat. Watching the sand castle melt. You use the bucket to bail out the water. You want the day to last forever. Shelter your ear and hear the waves, hear the sea. Tiny crabs released back into rock pools. In the car home, magical bright lights from the opposite direction, cosy and content inside the car. At the beginning of March 2020, I could see so much that was going wrong when we looked across to China and wondered what the narrative of the UK 2020 would be. 2020, the high street has been locked down and we have been locked up. Every shop, theatre, sports centre, restaurant, cafe, to have a cup half empty and a hopeless sense of forebode. TV soaps rationed to once a week. Drama series producers have not had time to make this tweak. I wonder how TV, film and theatre of this will play the coronavirus murder mystery when we were locked away. Scene one, I write, how to assume it's a hoax. Coronavirus, we joke. I write, scene two, how not to have any tests after a UK patient is diagnosed. T too relaxed, easy, lazy and going with the flow, we supposed. Scene three, I write, how to miss thousands of cases of pneumonia and infect nurses, doctors and paramedics alike. Obsessed with mental health and not yelling, treat pneumonia, coronavirus into a mouth. Scene four, how to delay and not issue lockdowns and social distancing. Bring in the military to sort out this money and organisational thing, I write. Scene five, how not to protect healthcare staff. Chasing around for PPE and scuba masks for a laugh. Scene six, how not to have mask shields and other personal protective equipment that the military have sent. Scene seven, how to not have beds and ventilators and other Hospital equipment, scene eight. How, how to relax things and spread the disease further. And breathe. We try and work towards a positive denouement here in the UK. We stay home at 8pm every Thursday. We clap on the doorstep. Scene 10, how to self-isolate. Hope you are locked in with your best mate. How to use a video phone. 80 year olds learn so they are not alone. 
So our scene looks down from afar to see what the mysteries are.